friends welcome to our youtube channel naraj academy in this lecture we are going to solve the five questions which are the previous year ias questions in a very detailed manner if you like the content of our channel then please do like share and subscribe our youtube channel and don't forget to press the bell icon button so whenever you upload a new video the direct notification comes to your mobile if any improvements in your video lectures then please do comment in the comment section we will definitely get all those improvements in the coming lectures so why to waste more time so let's get started so now we are going to solve the sixth question see the question here obtain the impedance Z i n in the term of Laplace transform for the circle shown in the figure at three instants. S is equal to zero. S is equal to j four radians per second and mod s is equal to infinity. At these three, we need to do figure out what is the impedance of this circuit. This question is given in the mains 2008 for 12 marks. So here, let's solve this numerical. So this is the circuit which is given in the question. The resistance is two. Here also the the resistance is two and the inductance is two s. And the capacitance is 4 by s. Already the circuit is going in the Laplace transform domain. So now we need to find what that is impedance. So these two are connected in the parallel and with the series fashion. So therefore 2 plus of this is series 2 plus 2s parallel of 4 by s. So therefore 2 plus parallel combination of 4 by s and 2 plus 2s. J1 J2 by J1 plus J2. So after doing the simplification of this one, we got this one. J of s is equal to two plus four into s plus one by s square plus s plus two. So this is the thing which we got after doing the simplification. So now we need to find. Suppose in place of s, I am going to keep here s is equal to j omega. So therefore, J of j omega is equal to two plus. So wherever the place, if you see s, you need to substitute the j omega. So therefore, j omega plus one by j omega whole square is nothing but minus omega square, and s is equal to j omega plus two. So here now. So the first case is we need to find what is the impedance of the circuit at s is equal to zero. Means s is equal to zero is nothing but s is j omega is equal to zero. So, so therefore omega is equal to zero. So wherever the omega, you need to substitute omega is equal to zero. So therefore j of zero is equal to two plus four into zero plus one by minus zero square plus j zero plus two. So if you do the simplification, so this is nothing but four. Zero plus one is nothing but One so one into four is nothing but four. This is zero and this is also zero. So therefore four by two is nothing but two. Two plus two is nothing but four. So therefore j of zero is equal to four. So this is the impedance of the circuit at s is equal to zero. At s is equal to zero means a DC component. Whenever if you give a DC source, the impedance of the circuit is nothing but four ohms. And similarly now s is equal to j four. <laughs> Second case is at s is equal to j four. We need to find what is the impedance of the circuit. So s is nothing but j omega. So therefore j j get cancelled. So therefore omega is omega is equal to four. So wherever the omega is in place of omega, you need to substitute here four. So therefore two plus four into j four plus one by minus four square plus four j plus two. So if you do the simplification of this one, we got two plus eight j plus two by minus j minus seven plus two j. So this is in the Rectangular form. So now we need to convert into polar forms. So two plus the polar form is nothing but magnitude under root over eight square plus two square, and the angle is tan inverse eight by two. And similarly here the magnitude of this one is root over minus one over square plus two square at an angle of one eighty minus tan inverse of two by seven. This is two by seven. So if we do the simplification of this one, we got two plus one point one three at an angle of minus eighty eight degree. So this is two angle zero one one point one three degree angle of minus eighty eight. If you do this one also, we got two point three three degree angle of minus twenty eight degree. So therefore, here the impedance of the circuit at J, at S is equal to J four is nothing but two point three three at an angle of minus twenty eight degree. So we figure out the option A and a case A and also case B. Now we are going to solve the at case C. So now at the third case we need to find what is the impedance of the circuit at s is equal to infinity s s is nothing but j omega is equal to infinity so blindly omega is equal to infinity at omega is equal to infinity we need to find what is the impedance of this circuit so therefore here we already know j is equal to 2 plus 4 into j omega plus 1 by minus omega square plus j omega plus 2 so now what i am going to do is now i am going to take here in the upper part omega square is a common and similar also i am going to take the omega square as common so therefore here if i take the omega square is a common it will become j by omega plus 1 by omega square so if i take the omega omega square common in the denominator i am going to get minus 1 plus j by omega plus 2 by omega square so therefore this omega square omega square get cancels now omega is nothing but infinity so anything by infinity is nothing but zero here also 1 by omega square means 1 by infinity square is again zero and similarly j by infinity is nothing but zero 2 by omega square means infinity square is again zero so therefore here finally we are going to get 2 plus 4 into 0 plus 0 by minus 1 plus 0 plus 0 
So 0 by anything is again 0. So 0 into 4 is nothing but 0. So therefore 4 into 0 is equal to 0. So therefore 2 plus 0 is equal to 2. So, the, so therefore finally z is equal to 2. This is the correct solution of this question. So in this question they asked the impedance of the circuit at three different conditions. At S is equal to 0 and S is equal to J4 and at S is equal to infinity. So you need to do the detailed procedure. You need to solve the step by step. Then only you are going to get the twill marks. This question is given in the IS mains examination 2008 for 12 marks. Now we are going to solve the seventh question. See the question here. Find out resonant frequency of the circuit shown below with the terms of the circuit parameters. So we need to find what is the resonant frequency of the circuit in terms of the circuit parameters. So here they are given a parallel RHS. Resistor and injector are connected in series fashion with the parallel combination of the capacitor and is AC source voltage. This question is given in the IS mains examination 2006 for 12 marks. So let's solve this numerical. So this is circuit, resistor, inductor and a capacitor. So the resistor and inductor are connected in series fashion, parallel combination of the capacitor. And the source voltage is V is equal to Vm sin omega t. So now we need to figure out what is the resonant frequency of this circuit. So whenever this omega is changing, the frequency, whenever we are going to change the frequency at a particular frequency, this whole circuit is going to behave like a pure resistor circuit. At that frequency, we are going to say that the current is maximum. So therefore, the supply voltage and the supply current are in phase. It's a pure resistor circuit. At that time, frequency is called as a resonant frequency so therefore here now we need to find what is the total impedance of this circuit as these two are covered in the parallel fashion so therefore 1 by z equivalent is equal to 1 by z1 plus 1 by z2 so here z1 is nothing r and l are connected in series fashion so so therefore r plus j omega l and z2 is nothing but minus j x e because it's a capacitor minus j x e so 1 by z equivalent is nothing but y equivalent so now i am going to do the rationalization means i am going to multiply and divide by r minus j omega l so that for r minus j omega l by r square plus omega l whole square we are going to get here so x is nothing but 1 by omega c so if it goes to the upper part it is going to get j omega c so now i am going to separate the real parts and the imaginary parts so the real part is only r by r square plus omega l square and the imaginary part is omega c and here minus omega l by r square plus omega l whole square so now i have separated the real part and the imaginary part so at resonance at resonance the circuit is a purely resistive circuit means the impedance is also purely real and the admittance the impedance and the admittance are purely real so therefore the imaginary part will become zero because at resonance the circuit is a purely resistive resistive means only the real part will present but not the imaginary part so therefore now we need to equate the imaginary part to zero so therefore now i am going to take that particular frequency is nothing but omega naught so omega naught c minus omega naught l by r square plus omega naught l whole square is equal to zero so now i have to turn to the right side so i got omega naught c is equal to omega naught l by r square plus omega naught l whole square so therefore omega naught omega naught get cancels so there is only one equation with one unknown which is omega naught so if you solve this one we are going to get omega naught is equal to under root over 1 by lc minus r by l whole square radians per second so omega naught is nothing but under root over 1 by lc minus r by l whole square radians per second so this is a very important formula also based on this the questions will be asked in the gate also and is prelims also the questions will be based on this formula omega naught is equal to root over 1 by lc minus r by l whole square so if you solve the detailed procedure we are going to get here 12 marks this question is given is means of 2006 for the 12 marks so now we are going to solve the eighth question see the question here show that the resonant frequency omega naught of an rlc series circuit is geometric mean of omega 1 and omega 2 the lower and upper of power frequencies respectively so now we need to find that in this question we need to prove that the resonant frequency is nothing but the geometric mean of the upper frequency and the lower cutoff frequency higher cutoff frequency and the lower cutoff frequency or higher power frequency and the lower frequency we need to prove that omega naught is equal to geometric mean of omega 1 and omega 2 which are the lower and the upper cutoff frequencies so now this question is given in the is 2005 means 2005 for 10 marks so let's solve this numerical so this is a series rlc circuit for the series rlc circuit we are going to give a supply source of voltage v and the current i so here we need to prove that the resonant frequency is nothing but the proof is the resonant frequency is the geometric mean of the upper and the lower cutoff frequency 
geometric mean of upper and the lower cut off frequencies which are wh and wl so we need to prove this one so here the current i the current i is equal to voltage by total impedance z so v by that is nothing but these three are created in the series fashion so therefore r plus j xl minus j xc so therefore now i am going to take the j as common so therefore xl minus xc so xl is nothing but omega l and xc is equal to 1 by omega c so, so therefore v by r plus j into omega l minus omega c so now here but i need only the magnitude of the current so the magnitude of the current is nothing but v by now i am going to take the magnitude of this one so therefore root over r square plus omega l minus 1 by omega c whole square but at half power frequencies half power frequencies is the current is equal to 1 by root 2 of the maximum power then only see here if the current is if the current is equal to i square into r because only the resistor is going to consume the active power but not the inductor and the capacitor so therefore now if i want to get the half of the power half of the power is nothing but here p by 2 so p by 2 is equal to i square by r so here this is a so if you if you want the maximum power means maximum power is maximum current so therefore now here if i want the half of the maximum power is p max by 2 so here in place of p max if you substitute here i max square i max square into r by 2 is equal to i square into r so r get cancels so therefore now i is equal to i max by root 2 so therefore at half the at half the maximum power at half power at half power the current is nothing but i max by root 2 so therefore that is why the magnitude of the current at half power frequencies at half power frequencies maximum current by root 2 so therefore here but i max is nothing but v by r because here at resonance frequency the inductor and the capacitance will inductor reactors and capacitor reactors will get cancel each other so therefore only there will be v by r root over r square is nothing but r as the impedance is low value so therefore the current will be a huge value so therefore the maximum current is v by r so in place of i max i am going to substitute the v by r so therefore mod of i is equal to v by under root root 2 into r this is the second equation so therefore this is a general expression of the current but this is the at half power frequencies this is the amount of current so therefore now at what frequencies i am going to get this general expression as a this one so therefore i need to equate this one and two then only at a particular frequency omega now i need to figure out the the current is nothing but v by on the root or root 2 into r so therefore i need to equate the 1 and 2 so in order to find at what frequencies this general expression is going to lead the current of this value so therefore now i need to equate the 1 and 2 so v by under root 2 into r is equal to v by under root or r square plus omega l minus 1 by omega c whole square so this v and v can get cancels so now if i solve this equation i am going to get omega l minus 1 by omega c whole square is equal to r square so therefore now this will lead to omega l minus omega c is equal to plus or minus r because here in place of r i need to write plus or minus r whole square so therefore now i am going to get the two conditions plus or minus r so the first condition is positive r and the second condition is minus r see this positive r indicates that omega l is greater than the 1 by omega c and the minus r is indicates that 1 by omega c is greater than the omega l so therefore when omega l is greater than the 1 by omega c it means that the circuit is a inductive circuit so that's why inductive circuit if 1 by omega c is greater than the omega l it means that the circuit is a capacitor circuit so therefore now i need to find what is the particular frequency omega and also this frequency so that so therefore i am going to get this value r see now i am going to solve the two equations see the first equation is omega l minus 1 by omega c is equal to minus r and similarly the other case is omega l minus 1 by omega c is equal to plus r so these two equations i am going to solve in order to get the frequencies so here is a capacitor circuit so therefore always in a capacitor circuit the resonance will miss in a capacitor circuit is nothing but here the current will be maximum at resonant frequency omega naught so at omega less than omega naught is nothing but a purely capacitor circuit so therefore here this resonant frequency is called as the omega l and if omega is greater than omega naught that higher cutoff frequency is called as the omega omega h this is the inductive circuit so therefore this is the higher power frequency and the lower power frequency so as a circuit is a capacitor circuit so we are going to deal in the lower frequencies means in the capacitor nature means omega l omega, omega l is nothing but lower cut of frequency so, so therefore now in place of omega i am going to assume it as a omega l it's a notation so therefore omega l 
So now if I sub if I simplify this one means in place of omega I am going to substitute omega L omega L is a simple notation. So therefore after solving this one we are going to get omega L square plus R by L to omega L minus 1 by L C is equal to 0. So this is the equation we are going to get. So the basic equation is nothing but AX square plus BX plus C is equal to 0. So the roots are nothing but X is equal to minus B plus or minus on the root over B square minus 4AC by 2A. So this is the equation. So by this equation, we are going to get the roots as minus r by l plus or minus under root over r by l whole square plus 4 lc by 2. So now I am going to take this 2 to the inside. So therefore this 2, if I take this here, it is going to get 2l. If I take the 2 inside, it will become 2 square. So therefore 2 square is nothing but 2l whole square and 4 get cancels. So this is the, we are going to get the simplified. Now we need to check whether we need to take the positive sign or whether we need to take the negative sign we need to check so here suppose if i take the negative sign what i am going to get see this is also negative and this is also negative so therefore the total is negative so frequency cannot be negative so therefore we must not take the negative value so therefore we need to take the positive sign so therefore now i need to take the positive value because r by 12 whole square here also r by 12 whole square plus if you add anything this will be always greater than the r by 12 so therefore the total net is a positive value see r by 12 here also r by 12 r by 12 whole square if you do this is greater than the this one plus 1 by lc if you add anything it will greater than the, this one so that's why it's a positive value so therefore now we will take only the positive value so therefore omega l is equal to minus r by 12 plus under to r by 12 whole square plus 1 by lc so we figure out this value lower cut of frequency omega we figured out now we need to find what is the omega h in this in this always the circuit is a inductive circuit so therefore this is the equation we got plus r is nothing but inductive means omega l is greater than the 1 by omega c means it is a inductive circuit so now we need to find what is the higher power frequency so in place of omega i am going to here omega h i am going to assume so therefore in place of omega i am going to assume omega h so if we simplify this uh, equation, we are going to get omega h whole square minus omega h into r by l minus 1 by l c is equal to 0. Again, it is in the nature of a x square plus b x plus c is equal to 0. So this is the basic equation. Minus b plus or minus under total b square minus 4 c by 2a. We got. So now also I am going to take this 2 e to each and everything. So therefore it will become 2l and here it will become 2l whole square and the 4 get cancels. So this is the, now we need to check whether whether we need to take the positive sign or the negative sign suppose if you take the negative sign r by 12 whole square suppose if there is no L, 1 by lc r by 12 whole square is nothing but under root or it will become r by 12 again so so both will get cancelled and it is equal to zero but if we add 1 by lc so this is totally this whole nature is greater than the r by 12 so therefore this is greater than this one is nothing but negative value because it's very higher than this one so it's negative value so frequency cannot be negative so therefore we must not take the negative value suppose if you take the positive so both are positive so the frequency will be positive value so only positive frequencies are going to take in so frequencies cannot be negative only positive values are going to be accepted so therefore we need to take the positive sign so therefore omega h is equal to r by 12 plus under root over r by 12 root square plus 1 by lc so you need to always know what the positive sign or negative negative sign we need to take based on the based on the ideas we are going to get this one so only we are going to assume the positive value but not the negative value here so this is the omega h we figured out so we figured out the higher cut of frequency and the lower cut of power frequencies so these are the equations we got so let me assume this as a and this as b so a plus b so this is nothing but minus a and plus b so because this is a means here minus a plus b so now what i am going to do is i am going to multiply this omega l and omega h so therefore a plus b into minus a plus b is nothing but b square minus a square so b plus a into b minus a is nothing but a square b square minus a square so b is nothing but under power r by 12 whole square plus 1 by lc so if you do the square the root and the power will get cancelled so therefore r by 12 whole square plus 1 by lc minus a square is nothing but a r by 12 so we, we need to do the square so r square so this both are same so this is going to get cancelled so therefore 1 by lc so omega naught is nothing but 1 by root over lc so 1 by lc is nothing but omega naught square so therefore omega h into omega l is equal to omega naught whole square so therefore omega naught is equal to under root over omega h into omega l so therefore finally we proved that the resonant frequency is nothing but a resonant frequency is nothing but a geometric mean of the higher cut of frequencies and the lower cut of frequency so now we are going to solve the ninth question see the question here find the abcd parameters of the circuit shown below so this is a star connected 
Right. Pure resistor circuit. So for the circuit, we need to find what is the ABCD parameters of the circuit. This question is given in the IS means examination 2006 for the 10 marks. So let's solve this numerical. So this is a circuit which is given in the question. So for the circuit, we need to find what is the ABCD parameters. So here, so this is the conventional question. So, so therefore, you need to do in a procedure manner. So this is the current I1, this is the current I2, and the voltage V1 and the voltage V2. So across this point, the two currents are incoming. So therefore, now this is nothing but I1 plus I2 because the two currents are incoming. So therefore, the outgoing current is the sum of the two incoming currents. So therefore, here also I1, here also I2. So now the ABCD parameters in the two-port interval, the ABCD parameters is V1, I1, here V2 minus I2, A, B, C, D. So therefore, now always you need to make sure that you need to write V1 in terms of V2 and I2 and similarly I1 in terms of V2 and I2. So this is the main agenda. So you need to write V1 in terms of V2 and I2 and similarly I1 in terms of V2 and I2. Then only we are going to figure out the value of the ABCD parameters. So now I am going to write the base KVL equation in this loop so now i am going to write the basic kvl equation in this loop so i am going to go from minus to plus so therefore plus v1 so i am going to always goes from higher to higher potential to lower potential so current always goes from higher potential to lower potential so therefore minus to i1 because i am going from plus to minus so there is a drop in potential and similarly here also i am going to move from positive to negative so therefore there is a drop in potential so therefore minus i into i1 plus i2 is equal to 0 so if you simplify this equation we are going to get v1 is equal to 12 i1 plus 10 i2 so let me assume this is the first equation so therefore now i am going to remove all these things so therefore you may not be confused so now i am going to write the kvl in this loop so therefore here also current always goes from higher potential to lower potential and here also the current goes from higher potential, higher potential to lower potential so now i am going to move in this kvl loop so i am going from minus to plus so therefore there is a rise in potential so plus v2 and similarly i am going to move from positive to negative so there so therefore there is a drop in potential so minus 4 i2 similarly i am going to move from po positive to negative so therefore again there is a drop in potential so minus 10 of I1 plus I2 is equal to 0. So therefore now, now I need to simplify this one. Now if I do the simplification of this equation, I am going to get here V2 is equal to 10 I1 plus 14 I2. So if you see carefully here, I need to, I need to get I1 in terms of V2 and I2. So here I1, so therefore now I am going to take this I1 here. So therefore if I take this 14 I2 to the this side, it will become my 4 V2 minus 14 I2 and I need to, I need to divide by 10. So I got 0.1 V2 minus or 1.4 I2. So if you see carefully, I1 is in terms of V2 and I2. So we got a second equation. Now what I am going to do is, I am going to keep this I1 here. So if I1 is in terms of V2 and I2, so therefore now I am going to get V1 also in terms of the V2 and I2. So therefore here in place of I1, in place of I1 I need to substitute this equation. So therefore here V1 is equal to 12 into this I1 plus 10 I2. So therefore if you simplify this equation we are going to get V1 is this one. So finally the equations which we, which we need to write the in order to write the ABCD parameters are two equations which is V1 is equal to 1.2 V2 minus 6.8 A2 and similarly I1, I1 we already know which is 0.1 V2 minus 1.4 I2. So now I am going to write this in terms of the matrix V1 I1 and here V2 minus I2. So therefore 1.2 6.8 0 0.1 1 1.4. So therefore this is called as the ABCD parameters. So always the main agenda. So whenever if you want to figure out something, always is the first equation. So V1 I1 ABCD V2 I2. So we need to be careful. Now always we need to write V1 in terms of V2 and I2. So V1 is in the terms of V2 and I2. And similarly I1 is in terms of V2 and I2. And I1 is in terms of V2 and I2. So this is the main thing you need to remember in order to do any simplification. So finally, this is the solution of this question. So now we are going to solve the 10th question. See the question here. Two mutually coupled identical coils are connected in series having self-inductance L is equal to 4 milli Henry and mutual inductance of M is equal to 2 milli Henry. So what is the maximum ratio of two possible values of effective inductance? And determine the coefficient of coupling between the two coils. So here they are given it two identical coils the inductance is l is equal to 4 milli henry and the mutual inductance between these two coils is 2 milli henry and we need to find what is the two possible value of the effective inductance means this can be connected in a, a either i2 series connection or the opposite series connection so therefore here now we need to find what is the effective inductance and also the 
coupling coefficient how much is the coupling coefficient is how much is the amount of flux on the first one is going to link the second one that, that is called as a useful flux it is also called as a coupling factor or the coupling coefficient so we need to find this one so let's solve this numerical this question is given in the IAS mains, mains examination 2015 for 10 marks they have given first this eh? These two, in, these two coils are connected in series fashion. So they can be connected in either series I2 polarity or the series opposite polarity. So therefore here, whenever the two things are connected in the series I2 polarity means that incoming current, the incoming current is, is in the dot. And similarly here also, the same incoming current is also in the dot. So whenever the two currents which are going into the dot or which are, they are leaving the dot, we are going to get the positive polarity. So therefore here, when the incoming current, one thing is entering the dot and the other thing is leaving the dot, we are going to see it as a opposite polarity or the subtractive polarity. So therefore here, I2 polarity and the subtractive polarity. And these two things are connected in the series fashion. So therefore, L equivalent is equal to L1 plus L2 plus 2M. So therefore, in the series connection, the series I2 polarity, here we are going to get the inductance which is nothing but L1 plus L2 plus 2M. So we, in the question they have given L1 is equal to L2 is equal to 4 milliampere because there are two identical coupling coils and the mutual inductance is 2 milliampere. So therefore, L1 is equal to 4, L2 is equal to 4 and in place of M is equal to 2. If you do this one, 4 plus 4 plus 2 into 2 is nothing but 12 milli henry so this is the 12 milli henry so for the separate to polarity for the separate to polarity the inductance value is nothing but l1 plus l2 minus 2m so therefore the inductance value will reduce so therefore here 4 plus 4 minus 2 into 2 so if you do this one we are going to get l equivalent is equal to 4 milli henry so in the question they asked what is the maximum inductor ratio so what is the maximum inductor ratio so therefore maximum inductor ratio is nothing but maximum by minimum so maximum value is 12 milli entry and the minimum value is 4 milli entry so therefore 12 by 4 is nothing but 3 so this is the first thing we need to figure out and the second thing is what is the coupling coefficient or coupling factor is nothing but m by under door l1 l2 so m value we know which is 2 milli entry and l1 l2 also we know l1 is 4 and l2 is also 4 so therefore 2 by under door 4 into 4 is nothing but 2 by 4 is nothing but 1 by 2 is nothing but 0.5 see the coupling factor always tells that suppose the coupling factor is how much amount of flux is going to link between these two coils is called as the useful flux. That flux is nothing but it is going to indicate by the coupling factor. See here, suppose this is a coil here. This is a coil A. So this is a coil B. Coil B. So for this coil, I am going to give a source voltage. Suppose it is going to give a 5 ebers. 5, 5 ebers amount of flux is going to radiate by this inductor so here coupling factor is nothing but so here suppose k is equal to 0 0.2 coupling factor means 50 percent 20 percentage so 0.5 suppose let me assume it is 0 0.5 0 0.5 is nothing but 50 percent 50 by 100 so therefore now we need to take the 50 by 100 50 by 100 is nothing but 50 by 100 into 5 so 25 by 100 is nothing but 0 0.25 so therefore here the flux is going to link is only 2.0 0 0.25 so if this coil is going to radiate a flux of 5 Weber, then this flux is going to link here with a coupling factor nothing but 0.5 is 50%. Only the 50% of this flux is going to link the coil B. That is the meaning of the coupling factor. Means coupling factor is nothing but it is going to tell how much amount of the flux is going to link from the coil A to the coil B. So this is the meaning of the coupling factor. So therefore the formula is, so K is equal to M by Anotor L1 L2. So by this we figure out the maximum ratio and also the coupling factor. So in this lecture we have successfully completed the 10 questions which are the IES mains examination solutions in a very detailed manner. If you like the content of our channel then please do like, share and subscribe our YouTube channel and don't forget to press the bell icon button. So whenever you upload a new video the direct notice comes to the mobile. If any improvements needed in your video lectures then please do comment in the comment section. We will definitely include all those improvements in the coming lectures. Thank you so much for watching this lecture. Keep smiling. Take care and bye bye.